Welcome back guys, my camera is now fixed, still a couple of little things that I need to change over there, but that's not today's topic. Today's topic is of course ID masks. We're going to be talking about how to create this ID mask right here, which is this sort of like clown colors that you see on this element. And the reason why they're important is because they're going to allow us to very quickly select specific parts, such as the stitchings right here on the mask and paint or do our texture job. Okay, so the setup is very simple. You can do this in Maya or Blender and let's go so that I can show you how to do it. Very well, my friends. So what you need to remember is that anytime we are transferring information through bakes, normal map, ambient occlusion, thickness, all of these maps that we normally get in Substance Painter, we're transferring information from the high poly to the low poly, okay? So the element that needs to have that information is, of course, the high poly. So this is the Plague Doctor's mask that we did a couple of uh, months ago for our Marble Designer course. And as you can see, it's made out of several different pieces. Now, when we were doing the retopology, some of these pieces remained the separate pieces, like this one right here, this guy's right here, right? This guy, for instance, is a little bit different because even though on the high poly, it's made out of multiple elements, such as the uh, stitches, uh, the streams right here, this leather patches, when we did the retopology, everything was connected into a watertight mesh. It's not watertight because it's empty here on the on the backside, but it's a single mesh that's encompassing all of those elements. Same for this thing right here. As you can see, the little metal plate that we have here on the front, this one right here, it was pretty much connected through a single element. However, on the high poly, they were not. On the high poly, there's still separate islands of uh, meshes. And that's important because we want to use that specific property so that we can create our ID map. Now, what is the ID map? This is the ID map. An ID map is a very simple color map that you create to separate which elements are made out of which material. Usually material is the way that we separate things, but you can use whatever you want. The point is that we're going to assign a specific material with a specific color to different parts of the mesh. So for instance, here, the, the red leather is going to be red and the stitches are going to be purple or magenta. And once we go into substance, I'm going to show you in just a second, we can use this information so that when we are here painting the stitches, we don't need to paint every single specific stitch okay now how do we do this let me I'm gonna click this button so we don't uh, see it anymore when you have your mesh for instance this one right here I'm gonna duplicate it real quick there we go what you want to do is you're gonna right click go to face mode and double click on one face that's part of the single meshes like this one see that so all of those faces on this top part of the element are part of the same island if I right click now and I assign a new material I'm gonna assign a Maya this is very important Maya Lambert material or bling but just the basic materials. And on that new material that I just created, which should be this one, Lambert 11, it's the last one, I'm gonna change its color to one of the primary colors right here. You can use a different tone, like it's, it's really not gonna be that much of an issue, but if you use two very similar tones, substance can get confused and you're gonna get some contamination from one island to the other. So a good rule of thumb is to try to use as saturated and as separate colors as possible. And I mean, if you're using 200 different IDs, then maybe something's wrong with your process. This usually works when you have, I don't know, five, 10, maybe 15 different colors. Uh, if you are having way, way more different differentiation there, you might wanna use a slightly different approach. But uh, yeah, you just select the color and that's it. So now if we take a look at the color, that leather right there is gonna be red. And when we, when we bake the ID, all of these things are gonna be, it's gonna, you're gonna create a mask that's gonna have the information of what faces are red. And that's a very good way to, again, match things. Now remember, when we're doing bakes, the low poly should be exactly on top of the high poly, and if you go to substance and you do your bakes properly, this is what you're gonna get. If we go to the bake property real quick, there's one thing I wanna talk about, which is this setup right here. As you can see, if I like uh, hover my mouse over there, that's the ID mask that we're creating. And it looks like a, like a clown texture or something because it has so many bright colors everywhere. But again, this is a texture that is saving all of the information so that you can easily select different parts of the mesh, okay? Now, uh, very important here. If you go to the ID map, you're, it, it's going to ask you, hey, what do you want to grab as your source? And by default, in the newest versions of uh, Substance Painter, this has been going on for like two years or something, they use the material color. That's why I assigned the Lambert color to a specific faces of my element. You can do this in Blender, by the way, just, just the traditional color, it's fine. And if you do this, when you do the bake, you are gonna get this result right here, this mask. Now, there's another method. This is actually the method that I knew before, which was the vertex color method. And the vertex color is pretty much like poly paint. So if you have an object right here, let me grab all of this. Let's assign just Lambert one. There we go. 
So if you grab an object and you go to the faces, again, to this one, you can actually go to Mesh Display and go to this option that says Vertex Color, Apply Color. And it's the exact same thing. You just assign a color, let's say red in this case, and you say Apply. And what that will do is it will fill the vertex with color information. So remember, the vertex usually have XYC information where they are in the world, where in this case, we're adding XYC RGV. So there's an extra little like float values right there to tell, um, in this case, Maya, that all of those vertices should be red. This again is what happens with polypaint. When you're polypainting inside of ZBrush, you're actually painting each specific vertex. That's why if you want a really high quality texture with polypaint, you need to have a bunch of uh, polygons, right? Like a bunch of points. So you can do this method as well. Just go to each individual island, exactly as I did with this one right here, and um, create the specific, um, what's the word? The specific colors for all of the different elements. But make sure here in Substance to change the color source to vertex color, okay? Very, very important. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You can also use this file ID and mesh ID polygroups, which is quite quite good, but again, you would need to go to ZBrush and do a couple of other changes. These two, I would say, are the easiest one. And to me, right now, Material is probably the easiest one because you just need to assign materials to the different parts of your mesh. Now, how does this work here inside of uh, Substance? Well, uh, as you can see, oh, we already have all of my folders right here with the, with the full texture. That's the, the final texture here for the mask. But let's say we want to add a red stitching to this thing or like a brown stitching to, to only the stitches. Well, what I like to do is I like to create a group and I'm gonna name this group Brown Stitches. And inside of this, or in this group, I'm gonna add a black mask, or in this case, a white mask, or sorry, I'm gonna add a black mask, even though it's gonna show everything else. Let me turn everything else off because I wanna show you something else. There we go. So it's gonna add that uh, white mask, there we go. And we can select a simple material. I'm just gonna use this cork natural color for now. There we go. And if we go to this mask right here, you can right click and use this option called Add Color Selection. And the Add Color Selection works, as you can see, with the ID mask. So just pick color, pick the color there, the purple color, and there you go. That's it. You don't have to worry about having any sort of like overlapping thing. You don't have to go in and paint each individual stitch because everything is baked down into this ID map. And as you can see, the geometry there is non-existent, right? Like we don't have any geometry for the stitches. They're all being projected to the mask, which is what we were doing or what we normally do with bakes for games. We cover all of this in the Substance Painter course, by the way. So let me just show you one more thing that I think is uh, important about the ID mask, which is the little line that you sometimes get. So if I add, let's say another leather material right here, let's just wait for this to load. It should load in just a second. There we go. Uh, I'm, of course, going to increase the tiling a little bit so that we have a nicer detail. There we go, closer to what we're looking for. And let's make the color a little bit darker so that it matches with the idea. There we go, perfect. So if we add a black mask again, or actually Control-G to make a group, add a black mask to the group, and then Control or right-click to add a color selection, we can very quickly pick again the red color, and now every single part of the character that is red will have this leather material. But look at that, that's what I wanted to talk about. The unfortunate situation with ID maps is that since they are maps, this, it's an image, right? There will be pixelation. There will be a little bit of anti-aliasing thing that you might need to figure out. The best advice that they can give you here is as follows. First of all, you can try to go here to the color selection and play with the tolerance a little bit. That should get rid of some of the elements. As you can see, if I push the tolerance really, really, really high, I pretty much get rid of, of that like little border. Uh, but sometimes if you go way too far, it's just going to like overwrite. Like it's not going to be able to, to obey the mask properly. But in this case, since the two colors are really different from each other, the red and the magenta, it's easy for the software to know where to, where to stop, right? Now, another thing that I like to do is I don't like to have the tolerance as high, but I go to the very bottom layer and I just add a black mask, black layer with a very high roughness, sometimes like this. Okay, why? Because it gives us just, it, it just fills that little aliasing thing right there. It just fills in that little element. And as you can see, those couple of pixels that were missing are now filled with a black line, which is expected in those sort of connections. So that's pretty much it, guys. Now, as you can see over here, these are the metals. I have my mask there for the metals. These are the bronzes. There we go. This is the leather. There we go, with all of the layers and dirt and everything. This is the trims is the same letter, just a little bit glossier. These are the stitches, and this is the eyes right there. 
So combining all of those elements gives me this final result. And I did not have to mask anything manually. Everything was done with color selection for this asset. And it's a super, super fast way to quickly mask out certain sections of your element, especially when you're doing bakes. But even if you have like, like complete meshes, especially if you have multiple meshes, this technique is really, really, really good. So I always encourage you guys, especially if you're already in the sort of like intermediate level or a little bit more than just like learning the basics, make sure to use ID mask. It will take you an extra maybe five, 10 minutes to set them up inside of Maya or Blender. And it's gonna save you tons of times here inside of Substance Painter. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you back on the next one.